About a month ago, I did my review of the HP Spectre X360, a 14-inch 2-in-1 convertible that took the world by storm. It's probably one of the best laptops I've used to date here for 2024, and by far the best Meteor Lake laptop that I've been using, so that is saying a lot here. Well, I always had my eye on its bigger sibling, the 16-inch version of the X360, and I gotta tell you, I've been using it for the past few weeks, and I have my conclusions here. Now, it's not gonna all be great, although I think the overall takeaway is it's a really nice two-in-one. But for some reason, the performance didn't match up to that of the 14-inch, which doesn't have a discrete GPU, by the way. This one does. And we're gonna get into the numbers here and why I think it's still a good 2-in-1 convertible. I think there was some performance left on the table that maybe can be upgraded via firmware and a BIOS update to make it even better. We're gonna get into that and more in this review. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Spectre X360, the 16-inch 2-in-1 convertible, brand new for 2024. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP, I'm not being sponsored by HP, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, you can pick this up over at Best Buy for $21.99. That nets you the Core Ultra 7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 discrete GPU in the Nightfall black color, and that gorgeous 2.8K OLED display. Now, if you head on over to HP's website, it comes in at $22.99, and that one gets you two terabytes of storage as opposed to the one terabyte, but this comes in 16 gigabytes of RAM as opposed to the 32. So I will leave links for everything in the description below if you're interested in. Of course, this is one of the better two-in-one convertibles out there, although there are some issues here. We're going to get into it now. Without further ado, you know the drill, folks. Let's get this out of the box. Oh, wait, I didn't cut myself. <laughs> this is a sharp knife. <laughs> Okay, so we got some pretty nice packaging once again. It says HP there, Spectre branding on the side, sides, a couple of sides there. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Right off the bat, we get our pen. I think it's going to be the same pen that we saw on the 14-inch one here. It's the same pen. I don't think it's any different than the 14-inch. Here's the extra pen tips. I do appreciate that. I do like that touch there. Well, now, a little disappointing news when we found out that Best Buy model on that 14-inch didn't come with the pen or any of the dongles. So I was a little disappointed in that. Let's take a look at the charger. This is what I'm always curious about. And it's a USB-C charger. So it's one of the larger ones and it's 140 watts, 140 watt USB-C charger. Not too bad, it does have a little bit of heft. And again, I do appreciate that it is USB type C. So uh, much appreciated in that regard. And then of course you get your power cord here. We got some documentation here. It should be some warranty information, maybe a setup guide and so forth. Yeah, it gives you a diagram and so forth. So, uh, you know, st standard stuff here. And then, of course, the unit itself. Well, looky here. <laughs> we got the slate blue, which I'm very happy about. It does have a little bit of heft. In fact, we should probably do a measurement before we open up anything. With just the unit alone, 1.994 kilograms or four pounds, 6.3 ounces. So it's got a little bit of heft here, but it is packing a punch, a little punch under the hood. So power cord here, power charger, you're looking at 2.507 kilograms or that's five pounds, 8.5 ounces. So it's a little bit of weight to take with you on the go. There's no doubt about it. Looks gorgeous. Okay, let's check out the port selection. In the gem cut corner is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Next to that is a USB type A port. Good to see a legacy port. Now, moving over to the right side is a USB type C Thunderbolt 4 port that is full function. Next to that is an HDMI 2.1 port, something you don't get on the 14 inch model, by the way. And in that corner is a second USB type C Thunderbolt 4 port. I would say it's an okay port selection. One thing missing here 
is the no SD card slot. I would like to see that on a 16 inch laptop, especially when you're gonna do content creation. So you don't get it here, that's a bit disappointing. Now, HP makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. Just remove the four T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate with a spudger or pry tool or even a guitar pick. And once you do that, you're in. Now, you'll notice the two fans for cooling. We'll get into the thermal performance later on in this review. And you'll notice that 83 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life later on in this review as well. And like most laptops in 2024, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. I'm not a big fan of that, as you know. But the silver lining is because it is soldered in, it can run at a faster rate. And the good news is, as you can see here, it's running at 7467 megahertz. That is pretty fast, and that's faster than you'd get if you had sodium slots here. So that is the silver lining, at least. I still prefer to have upgradable RAM, but if we're not going to have upgradable RAM, at least give us the faster RAM, and that's what we have here. But the SSD is user upgradable, and as you can see, really good reads and writes, although the writes could be a little faster for a PCIe Gen 4, although certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. There's no doubt about it. Now, when it comes to the wireless, something a little bit disappointing here. We're not getting Wi-Fi 7 like we saw on the HP Spectre X360 14-inch version. Here, it's Wi-Fi 6E, and it's also paired with a Bluetooth 5.3 wireless card. It is upgradable by the user. It's slotted in, but not having Wi-Fi 7 means it's not as future-proof as I'd like it. The good news is, because it is slotted in, you could add it in yourself later on. So that, I guess, is a silver lining. But overall, I'd like to see Wi-Fi 7 seven right off the bat, right out of the box. Now, when it comes to the display, there are two options, IPS with a 2.5K resolution, and we have the OLED display. That's the one we have here. Let's talk about it right now. It's a 2.8K OLED display, 16 inches, 2880 by 1800. That's the same resolution as its 14 inch counterpart that we looked at. It's still gorgeous here, although you do get a little bit more screen real estate. And it does have the multi-touch enabled, edge to edge glass, micro edge, low blue light filter, and it is an HDR 500 display. So, so far looking really good, although it is an OLED display and you might see the screen door effect. If you looked really, really close, you might see it, although not not an issue for me. This is a stunning display, all said and done. And as you get with an OLED display, the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast, it's all there. Excellent coverage here of the color gamut. This is a very color accurate display. So if you're gonna do content creation in Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, this is an excellent panel for those tasks. And when it comes to PWM or screen flickering, really not an issue. Below 20%, you might notice it wasn't much of an issue for me. And since this is a multi-touch enabled display, navigating the OS with your finger pinch to zoom all worked very well. And having that high refresh rate here, 120 hertz, makes it even smoother, even more fluid experience than before. So I think it's really great they went with a high-res display here. As with the 14-inch, you get it here on the 16-inch as well. Now, use with the pen and tablet mode or the stand mode or even in the laptop mode has been fine. The pressure sensitivity was good. Taking notes, sketching an artwork, it all worked well. Even I was able to use this outdoors, although in direct sunlight, you might have some issues. It is a glossy display, not terrible, but just something to keep in mind. But it's bright enough for indoor use, that's for certain, getting over 400 nits of brightness. So I think the overall takeaway is this is an excellent display. And since it's an HDR display, watching high dynamic range content has been excellent as well. Good job overall. And if you do get this, I do recommend going with this higher end OLED display. So this is the HP enhanced camera here, the nine megapixel front facing camera here that is capable of what you're seeing here, 2160p or 4K video. Now to get inside this, you go to the My HP app, go to the video control, you have the auto framing, you could do the portrait or the, obviously if it keeps you always in frame, if I go back here, there it goes. Um, you can do the tight shot a little bit more closer or the standard wide shot is what you have here. It's the HP wide view. Uh, you can also do gallery view if you have more than one person. Now, you also have the enhancements, the backlight adjustment, the low light adjustment, the natural tone, the eye contact, and the appearance filters. And then, of course, you have the background blur, which is what you see here. And then the office, you could do the another office here, cafe, living room, outdoors. Uh, a lot of 
features here. You could also put your own. So a lot of things you can do at your user's fingertips. And I think HP does a really good job. And of course, with the Windows app, I think you're capped out at uh, 2K resolution or 1440p. But this, you can go up to oh, the full 4K. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I think they did a pretty good job here. So the NPU, as you can see, as I'm using these AI effects or the studio effects, it's actually working. Okay, let's talk performance. And as you can see, both the single and multi-core performance is very similar to the 14-inch version we took a look at. And it's running the same exact CPU, the Core Ultra 7 155H. So very similar results, although slightly better on the 14-inch, as you notice here. The other thing you'll notice if we look at the Cinebench R23 single and multi-core performance here, the 14-inch actually had a better multi-core performance than this one. This one did 10,553. That one did 12. 1681. So I think there's some performance left on the table here. I think they've tempered the performance a little too much on the 16 inch version. Now, where you are going to see an improvement is in the graphics, since this does have a discrete GPU, the RTX 4050 from NVIDIA. And as you can see, the Fire Strike score is better, the Time Spy score is better than the Arc graphics, which are good in their own right for an integrated solution, but having a discrete GPU certainly has its advantage. Now, when we look at it against some of the other 16 inch laptops in this category, category. It didn't do that great in terms of the single core score. That score of 2370 was on the bottom of the list. And when we look at something like the XPS 16 that I just took a look at, that did better in the single core performance. And then if we look at the multi-core performance against some of the other 16-inch laptops, yes, it did okay, better than last year's Dell XPS 15, better than the MacBook Air 15, but not much better or not better than the others in this category. So when we looked at the OpenCL GPU score with the RTX 4050 here, 73,000 is not, nothing to sneeze at, almost 74,000, but not quite as good as what we saw in the XPS 16, certainly not as good as the XPS 17, and that leads the category. Now, when I ran the Cinebench 2024 single core score here, it got a score of 104, which again was the bottom of the list here, and that was a little concerning, again, in line with other Meteor Lake processors, but then when we look at the multi-core here, it got a 701, less than what I got on the Dell. XPS 16 that I just reviewed. Again, that's running the same CPU, but has a better GPU for those wondering. Again, this one did 701, that one did 755. So you're getting the drift here. And to illustrate the difference between the 14-inch and the 16-inch version, when it comes to the CPU score, notice the 104 score on this one versus the 103. That's a single core. Again, very similar to what we saw on the 14-inch. There's no big difference here. And then when it comes to the multi-core, that's where the 14-inch actually did a little bit better than this one, 749 to 701. So very interesting result here. I was expecting to see better performance out of this. I think they've tempered down the performance to keep it cool and quiet. We'll talk about that. So as you can see from these numbers between the 14-inch and the 16-inch, the 14-inch actually pound for pound does better than the 16-inch for the most part. Now, don't get me wrong, the performance is still very good. And when you're looking in real world, everyday tasks, this did very well in Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, snappy, fluid, no hiccups, no slowdowns. It did very well. And when it comes to something for practical use, like video editing in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, it did very well. So I rendered a three minute 4K video in DaVinci Resolve. It took a minute, 15 seconds to render that video, scrubbing through the timeline. There was no hiccups, no delays, everything smooth and fluid, all very good. Now to put it into perspective, it took the Dell XPS 16 with its RTX 4070 discrete GPU, 53 seconds to render that same video. So you're going from 115 to 53 between the two. So this has held its own. It did very good in terms of video editing. Now, with that 4050 GPU, I wouldn't call this a powerhouse gaming, but if you lower some of the settings, you can get playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. Just be careful with the settings and go from there. But 4050 certainly is a bump up over the Intel Arc graphics. Again, the discrete GPU is certainly helpful here, but it's not going to be as powerful as the 4070 we saw on the XPS 16. And good news when it comes to thermal throttling, when I ran the Time Spy stress test, it got a passing score of 98%, meaning it detected very little, if any, thermal throttling under load. That's really good. 
Now, when it comes to the surface temperatures under load, never getting overly hot for the most part, although there was a hot spot by the J, K, and L keys on the keyboard, reaching around 43, 44 degrees Celsius. Nothing overly hot, but it did get a little bit warm to the touch there. And on the underside, under load, reaching as high as 47 degrees Celsius. Not enough to burn your skin, but definitely something to feel warm there. And as far as fan noise is concerned, also good news here, never going above, say, 43, 44 decibels under maximum load when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks the fans were not an issue at all Okay, let's talk about battery life. It's good, not great when you compare it to the 14-inch, which did a little bit better. A little bit surprising here. This did 10 hours and 44 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office test. That did 13 hours and 24 minutes, 9 hours and 27 minutes versus 14 hours and 54 minutes. So I think it did a little bit better, obviously, on the 14-inch than this 16-inch, even though this one has an 83-watt-hour battery versus the 68-watt-hour battery of the 14-inch. So that's pretty interesting. Running the same display at the 120 hertz so if you run it at a lower refresh rate you'll definitely get more battery life now when you compare it to say something like the xps 16 96 40 that i just reviewed this also fell short in that area that has a 99.5 watt hour battery this has an 83 watt hour battery that also runs at 90 hertz maximum this at 120 so you can see the difference here not quite as good as that xps 16 which had really excellent battery life overall now, I would expect even more battery life out of the IPS version with that QHD Plus resolution because OLED tends to use more battery than IPS in general. So I would expect a few more, a couple of more hours maybe than what we're getting here. Although this isn't bad for an OLED display. Just keep that in mind. Okay, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger, which is not something you normally can do on a two-in-one convertible. That means the hinges are on really nice and tight. And the other thing I noticed, very little screen wobble when typing. Another pet peeve of mine, and we normally see a lot of screen wobble on a two-in-one convertible. Not the case here. So all good on that front. Now, let's talk keyboard. I loved it on the 14. I love it here on the 16. The key travel, the tactility, the overall feedback is very good. Typing out long documents, emails and the like is very comfortable it has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment that worked well and just like the 14 inch version this has a haptic touchpad but this one is humongous folks very spacious and i thought scrolling and doing all the gestures worked very well i thought the tactility was very good i thought the responsiveness was very good the feedback in terms of the haptics are very good overall an excellent touchpad as far as i'm concerned especially with the haptic touchpad i thought it worked out really well and just like the 14 inch version you can do the gesture controls that's within the my hp app you can control the brightness the volume those worked well now, when it comes to the audio, I think it's really good. You got quad speakers here. You got DTS X Ultra Audio. You've got HP Audio Boost. Now, I'm going to compare it to the 14 inch here. Let's see what you think about it. Let me know in the comment section below which one sounds better. I think this sounds actually pretty good, although the 14 certainly holds its own. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give them a listen.
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Spectre X360 16-inch 2-in-1 convertible here in 2024? I like its amazing 16-inch 2.8K OLED display, variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz, really good. I like the RTX 4050 option here. That's giving you a little bit more graphics boost. I like the fact that you can get this up to a 32 gigabytes of RAM, although it is soldered. HP Wide Vision 9 megapixel IR camera is really good. It's got a camera shutter. You got pretty decent battery life here, although not the best when it comes to the 14 inch. I think the 14 inch outpaces that, and it also is outpaced by the XPS 16 we just looked at. It now has an MPU like other Meteor Lake laptops. That certainly helps out with the AI effects and the studio effects we saw with the camera. It's got quad speakers who are actually pretty powerful, pretty good in its own right, and the faster RAM now that it is soldered into the motherboard. And speaking of the RAM, it's now soldered into the motherboard. That means the user can't upgrade it down the road. I don't like that. And HP, I think, left some performance on the table, especially when you compare it to other Meteor Lake laptops we've seen. It didn't do quite as well. I think they tempered the performance a little too much. Maybe a firmware and BIOS update can fix that. But right now, it lags a little bit behind in terms of performance. And it has a glossy display, of course. You'll notice the glare and reflections depending on your lighting conditions. And I'm not crazy about the fact that you do not get an SD card reader, especially with a 16 inch convertible laptop, especially when you want to do content creation. But those are the negatives and I don't think any of them are deal breakers, but I think you need to go in with your eyes wide open with this. I think it's a really good laptop. It's a good two in one convertible, especially if you want a 16 inch laptop with more screen real estate. But my favorite is still that 14 inch version, which to me is one of the best laptops I've used to date, especially here in 2024. It's the best Meteor Lake laptop I think so far. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. But you can't go wrong. If you want a two-in-one 16-inch convertible, this might be your ticket as well. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.